The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host, I'm your Gotti, as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Talk Star Radio Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and Exxon TV, and our growing family of broadcast affiliates. And we're happy to announce the uh, the arrival of a couple of more affiliates here in the Exxon, CHCR FM 102.9 FM and FM 104.5 in Killalo Station, Ontario. That's in the Ottawa Valley. And KKRP AM 95, Rainbow 95 in Oklahoma. Now, if you'd like to give us a call toll free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My first guest tonight, Exxon Nation, is Laura Ketledge. And, um, Laura, welcome to the Exxon. Well, hi, Rob. My goodness. It's great to be on today. Well, it's great having you with us. Uh, you have certainly had a, your time when it comes to the paranormal. You're the author of The Near Death Connection, Throwaway Horses, The Last House on Covington Lane, and The Reincarnation of Tess Hamilton. Where did your interest in the paranormal come from, Laura? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, growing up, I didn't have any interest in the paranormal, except maybe uh, going to an occasional horror flick. Mm-hmm. Um, it all started, Rob, when I was 19 years old. I went out on a beautiful sunny day in northern Virginia for a ride. I rented a horse for the afternoon. The, the horse took off with me, Ooh. and I fell at a very high rate of speed, face first, into a ditch, and I died. What, hap- um, what, ha- what happened? I died. What yes, happened? I, d- I died, and um, between death mm-hmm. and um, uh, resuscitation, I had a near-death experience. Can you... no- nothing in the world could have prepared me for that. Was your near-death experience uh, like the other examples that we've heard from people around the world where they, they see themselves out of their body, they recognize themselves, then they end up going through the the tunnel, the lessons of life, and at the end of the tunnel, the deity or the family member waiting? Well, yes, but it was. I went further. Okay. I went much, much further in my near-death experience because linear time has no measure when you're dead. All right, you and uh, I have to take a commercial break. Long. You and I have to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Exxon Nation, Laura Ketledge is our special guest. We're talking about, amongst other things... Her near-death experience, her website is www.lauraketch.com. That's L-U-R-A-K-E-T-C-H dot com. And uh, we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Laura as the Exxon continues from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, I'd like to welcome aboard CHCR FM 102.9 and FM 104.5 to the Exxon family as well as KKRP Rainbow 95. We'll be back. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, 
Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x. ZBN.net. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Exxon Nation, our special guest this hour is Laura Ketch. Ketchledge, I'm sorry, her website is www.lauraketch.com. Now, Laura, before we went to the commercial break, you were telling us about your near-death experience, and uh, you said that your near-death experience went a lot further than the normal near-death experiences that we've heard about. Well, you know, um, it's hard to call death normal, but yes, mine was more explicit, went further, Mm -hmm. And there were some true realizations. And, yes, I did speak with a family member, and I did return, and I fought the return. It was so surreal, the whole experience, so hard for me to digest. I grappled with it for years, and I think that is why I put it all in my first novel, The Near-Death Connection. Uh, I have these different characters that all come to uh, this farm in uh, northern Virginia. Of course, it's a horse farm. And uh, each one has a near-death experience and comes back with a different psychic ability. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to write any of this if, if, if it hadn't happened to me. You know, I've been uh, doing this show now for a number of years, and I've learned that when when authors use fiction to tell their stories, it's because they find it easier for the reader to accept than if it was made into a, a novel. And is this why you wrote your books the way you did? Well, you know, the funny thing is I never set out to be an author, never thought about it. I went to bed one night in uh, 1987, mm-hmm. and um, I was totally broke. I had just left my husband, didn't have a job, didn't have an apartment, was camping out with friends. And I went to bed one night, and I dreamt my first novel. And I was so um, surprised when I woke up, and, the, and the, the story kept rattling in my head. So I talked to um, uh, some people that were, you know, very, very high up in the, uh, in the entertainment world uh, when I lived in New York City, and they said, you know, this really sounds like a cool story. Start outlining and working on it. So I doodled around um, for years, uh, 
you know, writing, you know, outlines and then chapters here and chapters there. And then about 11 years ago, I sat down and I started to seriously write it, and it just tumbled out of me. I don't know where it came from, but I'm not, I have to say, I, I'm a creative writer, but I'm not that creative. I could not have made up uh, what it's like to experience, have a near-death experience if it hadn't happened to me. So, you know, everything in my books and every single novel that I write is a true paranormal experience that I've had. All right, let me ask you, how did your near-death experience change your life? I don't mean that of becoming an mm-hmm. author, but what what did you learn about death, dying, and being alive because of your experience? Well, I, I, it changed my core values, changed me as a human being. Uh, cha- definitely changed my views on religion. Mm-hmm. You know, I have Judeo-Christian ethics. I'm a, I'm a, um, the granddaughter of a minister, but I don't believe what I used to believe, you know, before this had happened. I don't do the literal, uh, outline of the Bible anymore. Uh, but I did learn a couple of things. When you have a near death experience, you learn what is important. It is important to lo- love and kindness. Those are the two things, and then doing your finest. That's pretty tough to actually do in your day-to-day life because, you know, basically I have a potty mouth, kind of a, a, a wicked sense of humor, and I'm not a saint. But I kind of I try to do the right thing and try to, uh, you know, go on a, a decent path in life, you know, do the best I can with keeping a sense of humor. But um, material things really went out the window after uh, this near-death experience, and my core uh, uh, sense of self also changed. But, you know, uh, Rob, I had a, a real hard time adjusting to this. I tried to talk to my emergency room doctor and tell him what happened, and I was just absolutely dismissed. And I was pretty badly injured. You know, I didn't walk out of this um, accident unscathed. So, And I also um, tried to talk to another doctor that year, and, and, and I told her, and she says, well, why are you saying this to me? So I shut down for a number of years. I didn't tell anybody. didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about it until I couldn't avoid it any longer. Why do you think society has such a hard time to comprehend the possibilities after all the people who have had these experiences, like yourself, that, that it's taboo? We don't talk about it. Because in this society, we are fear-based, you know, uh, and people fan the flames of fear. And fear is, what is fear? Fear is ignorance. And, you know, um, it would be nice to know it all. It would be nice to have the road map of life and, and be on the right course. Nobody has that. We're all making a good guesstimate about what happens when you die. Mm-hmm. But see, the difference between a, a person that has had a near-death experience and someone who is not, it's a known. The transition from life or life after death is a known fact. It's not a belief any longer. And when you know that and you've been there, and it was so different. I mean, it is so freaking different than the physical world that I still can't explain it to people what it's like and what it looks like and the textures and the swirls of colors. And it's almost indescribable in, in, in uh, human language. You know, when we think of dying we think of heaven or we think of the promised land we think of paradise uh, how did your visit for lack of better words mm-hmm. uh, stand up to the the belief system that you may have had of had of heaven or what happens when you die well it went out of it went out the window real quick really? I always thought, you know, I was raised in the heaven and hell theory, as I call it. You mm-hmm. know, the burning in hell if you're bad, yep. the going to heaven if you're virtuous. Um, it's not quite like that, I'm afraid to say. Well, what happens in a near-death experience is that, you know, you have a recount of your life, mm-hmm. plus a whole lot more. And, you know, basically you get the bill. And it's not a punishment. It's it's an understanding. It's an explanation. It's... um. It's even more than that. But before I was coming back, my grandfather, who I, I was actually a very, very huge figure in my life, someone I love, someone who is 
gone out of his way to contact me, to nurture me since, you know, since he died. He died when I was 12. And it was so emotional seeing him and so wonderful. Just the idea of leaving him ripped my heart out as I was coming back. It was, it was, I fought coming back. And as I came back, these epiphanies, these experiences were literally uh, pulled out of my psyche or brain. And I felt like it was like washing away all this wonderful knowledge as I was, I was coming back because I, I couldn't take it with me. It, it was pretty wild. What is the message that you would like to give to readers and those who, who you, you meet and to those that listen to you on the media about death? Well, I'm not a preachy sort of person. We're all going to be dead eventually, mm-hmm. you know, and <laughs> we'll definitely find out. But uh, without preaching and um, because I'm not exactly a shining example of humanity, um, it's important to, um, to love people and do the right thing. But even more important than that, it is a absolute sin. It's an absolute no-no to uh, to interfere in someone else's destiny. That's one of the biggest things. If you um, let's say if you if you got in a car and you drove drunk and hit a kid and right. the poor child's you know damaged for life, mm-hmm. you have um, interrupted this person's destiny, and that is the biggest no-no of all. That is the biggest crime of all that you can commit is hurting an innocent, um, messing with their destiny, interfering in who they could have been. Do you fear death? Well, as a matter of fact, I nearly died last week. Um, and I, it's a funny story. Would you like me to tell you about it? Sure. Sure. Um, last Saturday, a week ago, um, I had a contact dream. What I call them is a contact dream where, you know, a spirit comes to me. Mm-hmm. And I talked to my um, my uncle who I'd only seen. Um, this is the first time I've had a visitation with him. And then I talked to my sister, and she said to me, you're going to die. And I'm, I'm like, not ready for it. You know, I'm, I'm writing and producing a movie. Not now. This is not a convenient time to kick the bucket. Mm-hmm. So she said, it's going to be fast. It's going to be your heart. And it's going to be between uh, three and five days from now. So I was pretty uh, pretty rattled. I got all my papers together, you know, gave, washed my dog, gave him some front line, uh, made, called my parents and said, you know, if anything happens, these are where my important papers are. And then uh, a couple of days later, I was in an intersection and going through, and a man ra- ran a red light, a um, big truck. And I looked up and saw the grill of the truck um, coming at me about, uh, I'd say, probably 60 miles an hour uh, or more. And... I just knew it was it, and I looked up at the grill, and at the last possible second, the car just burned rubber and and went, you know, um, to the other side. And you could see on the outline, you know, of the road when I went back to look at it where my car had been because of the the skid marks. But I had told my sister when I spoke with her, and I had the visitation, that I didn't want to die. I have things to do, and I can't die now. So... Maybe she was testing me, think, asking if I was ready, trying to prepare me. I don't know, but it was it was very, very important uh, that I uh, stressed that I wanted to stay. Laura, stand by. You and I have got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Thanks very much for taking time out of your day to join us here in the Exxon. Exxon Nation, Laura, Ketch, Laura Ketchledge is our special guest. Her website is www.lurakech.com. That's L-U-R-A-K-E-T-C-H dot com. That's L-U-R-A-K-E-T-C-H dot com. And Laura and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, Exxon Nation, I'd like to welcome CHCR to the Exxon family. Don't go away. We'll be back after the news. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. 
For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net 1-800-610-7035 worldwide toll free email exxon at exxon radio tv.com on msn messenger exxon radio tv at hotmail.com and our website www.exxon radio tv.com Exo Nation, Laura Ket, uh, Ketledge is our special guest. Her website is www.lauraketch.com. That's L-U-R-A-K-E-T-C-H dot com. Laura, before we went to the break, we were talking about a, another near-death experience that you had just last week. But between the time where your paranormal abilities have been turned on, have you seen any ghosts have you had interactions do spirits come and communicate with you how does it work uh yes um not right after the accident at 19 it was a couple of years later i saw a friend who had been killed in an accident uh i saw his ghost and then i think it was at least a year later before um i saw my aunt that had passed away i didn't know she had died but she came to me in the middle of the night and i got up and ran screaming through the house like a mental patient, so you can't say that I was brave. After that, I was so shook up because of these paranormal events. I thought I was having, uh, you know, there was something wrong with me, so I went to a therapist, and she said, well, I believe you've had a near-death experience. I believe you've returned with some psychic ability. It's not unheard of. It's not all that uncommon, and um, just relax about it. And once I heard that, once I had been reassured that it wasn't a schizophrenic break, I felt better. And then everything began to unfold. Um, I received more visitations from ghosts. Um, I had some, you know, other paranormal um, events happen. Now, I'm not a channeler or a medium or anything like that. I'm just a person that has and is able to uh, see ghosts. Uh, occasionally communicate with them, mm -hmm. uh, occasionally get mes mes good messages that um, are, you know, very helpful in my life. And the messages usually come in the form of a picture, like uh, I guess it's a telepathy where um, a picture, and it's, it's it, it, you know, sometimes the interpretation is subjective, sometimes it's not. So that's happened to me about 15 times, but as far as uh, uh, the ghosts, um, in the house I've lived in now for the last eight years, I have had over 75 visitations. Why do you think all these spirits are visiting you? Do you have a little neon sign on your front window that says, Spirits Welcomed? Well, stray animals come to my house for handouts now. I'm just joking. Uh, no, I'm not wearing some sort of neon, uh, you know. Well, I, 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 no, I, I didn't mean yeah. that physically, yeah. but is, is it possible that when someone has the ability to to see and communicate with those on the other side that there is something that attracts them to the seer like yourself? Yes, I believe so. Um, some people have called me sensitive, mm -hmm. and some people said I have some psychic ability. I'm sure there's people that have got a lot more psychic ability than uh, than myself, and they can do all these things. Uh, but, I, yeah, I definitely think once this has happened to me, and that's why I have the visitations. I mean, who's to, say, uh, who's to say that, you know, everybody may have them and just a few people can see them? 
I'm sure there's a couple, there's thousands of people like me, but I don't believe there's millions. You know what? I, I, I've often, I, I've often thought and I believe that everyone has the ability, but it takes something to trigger it, to turn it on. In your case, the near death experience. In other cases, no. uh, maybe it's the, you know, because I like I've been doing this show for twenty years now, and so many people have come forward saying that it's something traumatic in their life that opened up this gateway. Yes, you know, there there's definitely it opened the door, and now I embrace it. I'm used to it, mm-hmm. and you know, people have asked me, um, do these ghostly visitations? Um, does it scare you? Quite the opposite. Um, nothing really de- demonic has ever happened. I don't even know if you know believe in demons particularly. It's I feel nourished, uh, cared for, loved, and um, guided by these uh, ghosts. And I know quite a few of them who they are, which are dead family members. Some fam- some people that have died that I thought would contact me haven't. Uh, my grandfather and my sister have remained very very close to me, and it's it's wonderful. And, you know, when you see them, you know, it's just like you had a family reunion. Mm -hmm. So, to me, they're not gone. And I find that um, that's a gift. That's a gift to me. In the promo material that you sent us, uh, disembodied human spirits? Um, I don't know what disembodied means. Um, Well, this came from your promo material that we received, uh, that encounters with ghosts, disembodied human spirits... And her own death. Well, uh, I didn't write that, but uh, I, yeah, I mean, what I mean, uh, sometimes, okay, sometimes it's a spirit comes in the form of, you know, what they look like when they were alive mm-hmm. and they're usually um, younger. Right. And, uh, you know, but devoid of any color. So um, there's no pigmentation in the clothing or the face or the body. Other times, you know, it's almost like a vapor in the form of a ball because I call it an energy ball. It's not an orb. It's nothing like that. And when it comes in, I think it takes a lot of energy and effort for the spirit of the ghost to form into, you know, their former physical self. And I think if they've been dead a while, they don't even use that second physical body, you know, the the replica, the copy of their Mm -hmm. physical self. I think they come in in the form of a, um, a ball, an energy ball, and when someone has just died, it's a mauvish color. You know, it's very uh, translucent and dense at the same time, about the size of a volleyball. And when they've been dead a while, it's white. Um, the one night I was spending the night uh, at my late aunt's, and I woke up in the morning and sat up, and there were four of these spirits in a row. And that it was pretty unusual because uh, they usually come in one at a time. And when you're talking about these spirits, you're talking about these balls of energy? Well, I, I, I've, they've been referred to as energy balls, mm-hmm. um, but it is a spirit not in the, uh, the human form, and it's not an orb. Wow. And other times I've seen ghosts that, you know, look just as, uh, as alive could, as they did, you know, in their lives, but they're, they're white. They're white. So why don't these spirits, why don't these ghosts, why don't these orbs of energy actually go to the other side and leave this plane and allow themselves to continue their existence in wherever it, wherever it is you go, the other side? Well, this is where I differ with other with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that there is an occasional ghost that's stuck, doesn't know they're dead. I've seen them. I don't think that's the norm. I think when people pass over... Um, and they are in, in their, the other dimension or whatever you want to call it. Um, I believe that they can cross back and forth. I, I don't think the constraints that we can see in our minds aren't, aren't what they live by. That There is no uh, rules. The rules are very different over there. The abilities are very different. I call mine not hauntings. I call it visitations. I like that. So I, I don't believe that these souls are stuck mm-hmm. and they're, they're just, you know, coming to call on me. And I don't see them all at night, you know, in, in the daytime, uh, you know, times like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not all a night thing. It's not all scary. Sometimes it's pretty abrupt. Sometimes it's very abrupt. But most of the time, you know, this is a good positive thing in my life. And if I hadn't had it, I wouldn't be able to write about it in such explicit detail 
And in my novels, there's a lot of psychic explaining that goes on without preaching. And the thing is, you know, my paranormal book series is really like a paranormal version of the TV show Lost, where there's lots of clues and character development and characters over 30 that are interesting and and, um, you know, my books, I'm hoping to make them, you know, have them made into a movie at some point. That's my dream. I'm looking for the right publisher, the right super deal to sell this whole package of stories. You know, it's five connecting stories. But let me, ask, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. With all mm-hmm. the television shows that are out there, with all of the movies that are coming out, what makes yours so special that someone would want to buy and produce it? Well, because I have a real story to tell with interesting characters. You know, there, yes, there's an unusual love triangle, but mm-hmm. there's uh, characters that are in their 40s and 50s that are interesting. So even if you took the paranormal and ghosts, you've got a great story. And they're all different, you know. Um, they're connecting, but they're different. My mm-hmm. second novel, Throwaway Horses, I take takes place during um, in Ormond Beach, Florida in 1959. That's my hometown, Ormond. And it's about a horse slaughterhouse. And it sounds very Stephen uh, King-ish, but it isn't. But it's a great story, and it goes past the, the, the trauma at the slaughterhouse. And, you know, I write about how it was a, a, the slaughterhouse was built over a Seminole uh, Indian encampment. So uh, there's really c- cool stories. And uh, it took me many years to uh, lay down the tracks that my characters would travel on. So I would say, you know, it, it is like the, the show Lost where there is just so much, you know, um, interweaving stories, clues. It, it keeps my readers, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, paying attention. And it moves very fast. Uh, you know, it's not a long, drawn-out thing. There's no, you know, half-naked co-ed mm-hmm. getting chased by Hillbilly with a chainsaw, nothing like that. It's got real action, and there is a whodunit mystery in there. So um, I'm very proud of these novels. I'm looking for the super deal, uh, the great agent, the the whole you know whole enchilada, and I had to hold on to these before I went to the publishers just so I could present a series, just so that these people knew, hey, this new author, she has a series, and it's just real, real different mm-hmm. and real exciting. All right. So when you're not writing, what do you do? Well, I'm. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought I would take a year off of novels and do something fun, and I'm writing and producing a low-budget, very campy, very Edward uh, Wood-esque type of movie, and I love zombie movies. I'm a 50-year-old big kid that loves a zombie flick, so my zombie movie is called Another Apocalyptic Zombie Movie, and it's in production, and it's like... Uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead meets Blazing Saddles. Just ridiculous funny. And I thought this would be a great project, a little breather break from the intensity of, of writing novels. And after that, I'm going to do an autobiographical low-budget movie called The Accidental Psychic, which will uh, show what happened to me after the accident and all these years of, uh, you know, the visitations and it's actually funny because, you know, my life is your basic train wreck. I mean, I'm kind of like, other than my career, you know, I'm divorced. I've had these terrible accidents with horses. I've had, a, you know, a wild youth. And um, it's sort of Sandra Bullock funny, like, before her divorce. So, you know, that's kind of my personality. And even in my novels, I, I, I write things that are actually pretty funny because I think uh, life is kind of ironic and full of sense of, uh, full of humor. How do you deal with skepticism when people, when you tell your story to people and they say, oh, get out of here. This is so hokey. Oh, I, you know, that's their choice. You know, I don't have to convert anybody. I know the truth. I know that there is a transition after life. I know I've been there. I know I've seen ghosts. Um, if someone wants to mock me or disbelieve me, hey, that is their right and that is their prerogative. prerogative. And you know what? If this hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't have believed somebody that had my story that yeah. was spewing this out. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, I I wouldn't have believed me. But it is I don't have to convert, and anybody who disbelieves me or, or doesn't want to buy into it, you know, that's fine. Buy my books and get entertained. 
You and I have to take our final break. Please stand by. Exxon Nation, this is the Exxon coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. 1-800-610-7035 is worldwide toll free. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. You can also listen to the Exxon Radio Show past shows and present shows 24 hours a day 7 days a week 365 days of the year at www.exontv.com once again I'd like to welcome two new affiliates CHCR FM 102.9 and FM 104.5 in Killalo station that's in the Ottawa Valley of Ontario Canada and all the way in Oklahoma KKRP AM 950, Rainbow 95. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net and welcome back everyone our special guest to this hour is laura ketledge her website is www.lurakethch.com laura what do you believe is the most misunderstood part of the paranormal I think that um, folks don't realize, you know, it doesn't find you. Uh, I mean, it just happens. Um, You know, this is something you just, you know, can't sign up for. Um, You know, it's just a reality. It's an an extra uh, the sixth sense. It's like breathing and, and eating. It just, you know, it's part of your life. What would you like to tell the listeners who are listening tonight around the world about the paranormal, and how should they go about accepting the paranormal if it actually does come knocking on their door? Well, I think, Rob, it's real important not to panic that um, this is an ability uh, that should be appreciated, and, you know, don't freak out. Um, let it happen, and um, it's part of nature. Mm-hmm. It's just part of nature. Where can our listeners get copies of your book, Laura? 
Well, I'm looking for that great agent. I uh, don't mean to plug myself, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking for the good agent, and I haven't gotten them published yet. But there's um, – So why don't you there's, self – There's a good story to tell. Why don't you just self-publish them? Well, I want to sell them, actually, uh, the movie rights before I do something like that. But you're an unknown. Why would anybody buy movie rights that are written by an unknown who are unpublished? It makes no sense. Well, I think talent shines through, and I might not be Hemingway, but I've got great original stories. It's just a ma- it's a numbers game, just getting them in the right hands. Uh, All right, I want to thank you very much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure, Exxon Nation. Laura Ketch has been our guest at this hour, www.lauraketch.com. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free. My name is Rob McConnell, and this is the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. The show is then repeated in its entirety from 2 a.m. until 6 a.m., And then once again from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. Once again, I'd like to welcome our newest affiliates, CHCR FM 102.9 and FM 104.5 in Killalo Station. That's in the Ottawa Valley of Ontario. And, of course, Rainbow 95. That's, uh, let me see, KKRP AM 950 in Oklahoma. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past as the Exxon continues, as I said, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. 1-800-610-7035. Email Exxon at ExxonRadioTV.com on MSN Messenger, TV at Hotmail.com and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. Don't go away. <laughs> 